Meghan's short change. Duchess shows off her legs in a 520 pounds white tuxedo dress as she and Harry meet budding actors dressed as creatures from Middle Earth in New Zealand. Meghan left royal fans in awe in a white tuxedo dress as she returned to her roots and met budding actors dressed up as creatures from the Lord of the Rings. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were greeted by orc soldiers and chatted to a monkey as they took in Wellington's creative talent during the second day of their trip to New Zealand. Earlier in the day, the couple spoke with youth volunteers about mental health at a beachside cafe and braved the rain for a walk through Abel Tasman National Park, before meeting actors at a creative arts center. Meghan, a former actress, gave a nod to her hosts in a 520 pounds, AUD 939-666 US dollars, white tuxedo dress by New Zealand designer Maggie Marilyn as she joined her husband for a visit to Courtney Creative which runs programs for young people looking to get into film. The couple were greeted by two Lord of the Rings orc soldiers as they entered a room filled with musicians, actors, prosthetic experts and models. Luke Hawker, dressed as an orc, greeted the pair after hobbling along the ground to introduce himself to the Duke and Duchess, with Prince Harry joking that he had a face for dressing up as a monster. The 37-year-old said, I didn't know if I was supposed to shake their hand but they were standing there. They seemed quite scared. The couple then went on to meet Ruby Acevedo, 12, whose face was covered by prosthetics to make her appear like a monkey. Harry leant in to touch her face and asked Ruby, you can go outside like that? Afterwards, she said, it was an amazing experience. They were really nice and it was just a really nice experience to get to meet them and talk to them. They were everything I expected just really kind. He said, it was such a an honor to have an opportunity like this and be able to play for a royal in your lifetime is special. We talked about my music and wanting to put an album out next year. Megan said I had a great tone. I didn't want to talk at them. They've probably been talking to people all day, day in day out for the latest few days, so I didn't talk a lot. The Orc, or Mr. Hawker, gave Meghan a gold necklace with polished shell and diamonds made by Village Goldsmith and the couple then posed for pictures with an array of models and monsters. Happy Halloween, Harry quipped before the couple headed back into the Wellington evening. Earlier in the day, Prince Harry has revealed the adorable name he's using for his growing family in a speech at Table Tasman National Park on New Zealand's South Island. Addressing students from under a marquee as heavy rain fell, the Duke of Sussex showed his paternal side as he referred to our little bump. Prince Harry thanked the local Iwi tribe for their welcome and kind words. The weather forecast was a lot worse than this and we are really fortunate to be here. The rain is a blessing and a reminder of our connection to the land, he said. From my wife, myself and our little bump, it's a blessing to be here. Harry and Meghan are continuing their royal tour of New Zealand having met with young mental health advocates working to make a difference in the country. The royal couple held hands as they strolled through the Awil Tasman National Park on Monday afternoon. They wore wet weather jackets for the occasion as the rain fell in the Wilderness Reserve, where they were also talking to conservation staff and inspecting the National Park's beach. The Duke and Duchess had been due to attend a beach barbecue and tree planting with local students but the wet weather forced a change of plans. They instead joined the students for brownies and tea under the cover of a marquee at a beachside camp. Under the marquee, a Kalmachua, elder, from the local Iwi, tribe, Barney Thomas spoke in Te Rio Maori, wishing them well with their peppy, baby. Megan smiled as the words were translated for her. The Duchess sat slightly behind the Duke in the front row, though there was no ill intent. The middle represents the god of war and we don't want to put our women into that space. The elder explained, We want to be inclusive, but especially Megan, because she's expecting, we don't want to put her at any risk. It was not the Duchess' first encounter with the Maori language. She won praise after opening a speech on Sunday with the phrase with the words Tina Kautuketoa, greetings to all. Harry shrugged off the rain as he spoke to the crowd. The weather forecast was a lot worse than this and we are really fortunate to be here. The rain is a blessing and a reminder of our connection to the land. From my wife, myself and our little bump, it's a blessing to be here, he said. We bring you greetings from my grandmother. Then the Duke, in a black puffer jacket, and the Duchess, in a black sea salt coat, set out for a walk in the rain arm-in-arm arm and sharing an umbrella as they strolled down one of the area's golden beaches.
talking conservation with a ranger. The Department of Conservation's Andrew Lamison pointed out a waka, a flightless wood hen that only lives in New Zealand, as they went past, saying the animals were the country's equivalent of monkeys because of their cheekiness. Earlier in the day, Harry and Meghan had arrived at a cafe in Wellington, the country's capital, for the meeting. Meghan had stepped out for the engagement wearing a $420. Pound 232 slash 297 US dollars, Club Monaco Elaine Trench in Seaweed Green, Black 199 dollars, Pound 109 slash 141 US dollars, Outland Jeans, a Jack and Jack Black Turtleneck and Stuart Weitzman Lace Up Boots, with the Mranui Cafe putting on a pregnancy friendly menu for the mother to be. Hundreds of adoring fans holding signs and flags headlined the streets surrounding the cafe in Lyle Bay to catch a glimpse of the Duke and Duchess. The crowd cheered as the royals stepped out from their vehicle holding hands, before they headed inside the cafe at the Mranui Surf Life Saving Club. Harry, who is the Commonwealth Youth Ambassador, and Meghan spent about 30 minutes hearing about mental health projects operating in the country and the positive contribution they are having on young people in New Zealand. During the warm and free-flowing conversation, the Duke raised the need to normalize conversations around mental health and also spoke about his concerns the effect social media was having on young people. Meghan wore a 1737 lapel badge, which promoted a local helpline. Everyone needs someone to turn to, right? The Duke said, while the Duchess added you were all doing really excellent work. Co-founder of mental health charity Voices of Hope, Genevieve Mara, who was at the meeting, told stuff the Duke and Duchess are both really nice people, and they seem really happy. Harry, was very interested, they both asked a lot of questions. I talked about my own personal experience, about feeling a lot of shame, and he was really interested to understand why I felt so ashamed about it. School students later took to the streets to sing a Maori song as they waited for the royal motorcade to leave the cafe with the Duke and Duchess taking time out of their busy schedule to chat to those who were waiting, including five-year-old Joe Young who had become emotional and was seen wiping away tears. The cafe's owner Brownwyn Kelly told News Talk ZB just prior to the arrival of the Royals House staff were excited for the visit, which had come as a pleasant surprise. We didn't believe it, we thought it was a fairy tale, for us it was completely out of the blue. She said, staff from the royal palace when they were doing the pre-planning came to Mranui, they really loved the vibe, the atmosphere and I think that it's because it's right beside the beach, it really offered something. That coastal but unique sort of feeling. The menu featured items which were carefully planned by Ms. Kelly's business partner and chef, taking into account Megan was pregnant. She's been thinking about what to offer especially with Megan being pregnant. As it's just a morning tea it does make it quite simple so we're just going to offer some really delicious yummy little baking treats, which will offer some good local New Zealand products, Ms Kelly had said before the visit. Leftovers from the morning tea were not put to waste, they were given to the young children who were waiting outside the cafe. From the cafe, the couple boarded a Royal New Zealand Air Force helicopter bound for Abel Tasman National Park on New Zealand's South Island. It is the only time the couple will visit the South Island while in New Zealand. Following the visit to the Wilderness Reserve, they will attend a beach barbecue and tree planting with local students. Later, their Royal Highnesses will visit Wellington's Courtney Creative for an event celebrating the city's thriving creative arts scene. The couple arrived in New Zealand on Sunday the latest country on their whirlwind 16-day tour royal tour. On Tuesday, their royal highnesses will travel to Auckland, where they will firstly visit the North Shore to dedicate a 20-hectare area of native bush to the Queen's Commonwealth canopy. They will then join the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern to visit Pillars, a charity operating across New Zealand.